So Bitcoin has experienced sharp falls in the past. Do you think this will keep happening or will Bitcoin crash again? I think it will crash again and I think it will keep crashing and rallying its way up to some very big number. Um, in other words, if you really are patient and you're not on the computers very, lo very long, you want to be a buyer every time there's blood in the streets with cryptos, I think it will serve you very well. And then forget about it and wait until there's another event where such occurs and you can keep um, pu putting funds in. If you have that level of patience, if you need to be more interactive and putting in more regularly, then you need a methodology and a process kind of like what I've uh, spoken of before. But yes, it's going to keep, it's the inherent volatility. It's kind of like saying, will people suffer from um, fear and greed again um, in an asset that is going up really fast? Will people experience greed and fear again? And it's, it, it's markets, it's human nature that's lead to crashes and spikes. What do you think could cause Bitcoin to crash? Could it be an exchange gets closed down, a Bitcoin exchange gets closed down, or a big country passes a law um, against Bitcoin, or a major problem in the working of Bitcoins? There will always typically be a narrative that goes with it. How much the narrative really is um, the cause, we all uh, have yet to see. Um, often Often there's a psychological, I call it toe tagging, there's a need to attach a narrative when something sells off. Um, and any, any story will do sometimes. So sometimes there will be effect, but often it's everybody's best guess. I look at the chart, if it's done a lot in a short time, it's quite likely that it'll have a sell off. When the sell off occurs, they will then say, oh, it's because of the Sedgwick, the transaction, the scalability issue, the this and that. And then the minute people say, oh, okay, it's kind of like it's okay then because you put a reason to it. Sometimes it, it just needs to sell off because it's done too much. So I have here $100 of Bitcoin bought in July 2010 would be worth $4 million today. Is yeah. that right? It's quite insane, isn't it? That is insane. Can this climb in value continue at that rate? I think it can get more extreme before it goes the other way and settles back down, um, believe it or not. Um, just because it's an early, door of a, early doors of a very uh, in, uh, expansive industry. Um, that doesn't mean it has value to that. It's just what people are prepared to pay to get in now. And that's the fear of missing out. Uh, and that's why it can have very strong uh, sell-offs as well. There's still scope for 60, 70 percent, even 80 percent sell-offs. Um, but if there's a wall of money that's got to work its way in, we forget. We've got to remember, some people will say cryptocurrencies are a bubble. We've got to remember that they are uh, a, a canary in the mine for fiat currencies. Bonds are the bubble. Debt issued in the global economy is a bubble. You're talking about an interest payment that can't be met, um, you know, that 50% of all tax revenue in the US just to meet an interest payment on the scale of the debt at interest levels where it's paying such low rates of interest. That's a bubble. So obviously anything else that is, is, is a clean skin and offers an alternative to that floor may appear highly hypervalued, but in actual essence, just like Amazon stock price, you're looking at a future Amazon. It's an alternative to something that is really sick and jaundiced uh, and that is huge and is the basis for all our commercial tractions today and transactions today. So if this is to replicate that, um, it's, there is potential for some scary gains.